trust me, it will never happen. There are days that I long to be an Orthodox Jew. That's, that's, that's true. Because they take the Sabbath literally. I mean, there's, your, your, the, your job on the Sabbath is to praise God and worship God, to study the Torah, and to rest. Rest. Doesn't that sound like a good word, rest? I mean, I'm not certain about you, but I find that trying to take a Sabbath rest is a very difficult thing. I mean, you know, remember the old-fashioned days? I mean, these are old days when, you know, stores were closed on Sundays. That's never going to change, people, so don't even, because uh, how many are going to go shopping today, you know? So that's, that's why. Uh, but when you had nothing to do on Sunday, you were forced to be with family, maybe go on that Sunday drive, you know, have that nice Sunday dinner, take a nap, uh, you know, to, to rest and rejuvenate oneself. But we are such a 24-7, 365 day society. It's amazing how many people don't take their full vacation days coming to them. Or if they're on vacation, they're working while they're on vacation. Yes, they do. It's true. You know, I just, I really, I, even kids are children. We program them so much. I mean, they're going from activity, and parents, all of us, who are, all of you who are parents, we're all guilty, uh, over-programming them. Play dates, uh, this activity, this activity, this activity, all good for the kids. But whatever happened to the time when you could just say, I know what times are changing, but I love when my mother would look at my brother and sister and I and say, go outside and play, come back at dinner time. Uh, there was just something about that playtime, you know, that re that rejuvenating time. But you know, life has a way of getting in the way. <coughs> I mean, at, I have actually since before Lent began, my life, my personal life, has been almost twenty-four seven. You know, I, I get up early in the morning, I'm on the computer doing uh, office work, doing pastoral appointments, uh, preparing, and now with the arrival of our new cure coming, there's just so much to get done. And I'm going, 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 that there are days, and, I, and it's more days than not during the week, that I get to 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon and I realize I haven't even eaten lunch. <laughs> Haven't eaten lunch. I was just too busy to take the time to stop and eat lunch. Now, not that I could, you know, I could afford to miss a meal. Uh, but the point is, by not taking care of myself <laughs> there, by not feeding myself, how on earth am I going to be taking care of others? You know, this morning in this gospel, I can guarantee you throughout Christendom, most people are going to be talking about uh, the bit with Jesus and his mothers and his brothers or dealing with the Pharisees. And I preach on that over and over and over again. But I think... The Holy Spirit puts you at a place where you're at to listen to Scripture differently. And I have read this Scripture passage so many times, but I never, ever, ever really heard the first verse. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. This is the Jesus who would feed the 5,000, the 4,000. He would heal the people. But his disciples were with him and they were going so constantly 
trying to spread the good news with so many people around that they couldn't even take the time to eat. They couldn't take the time to reflect and spend time in self-care. No. There is absolutely nothing wrong. In fact, it's very biblical to take care of one's self. We believe that we are created in the image of God, the Imago Dei, the image of God. All of us, we're all children of God. And being children of God, that our bodies are a gift from God. And that we need to be able to not only feed our bodies with nourishment, but also to feed our bodies spiritually in order that we can serve others. Because if you don't do that, when the time comes, you will be no use to anybody else. This morning we heard John read from Genesis, that, that account of Adam and Eve. The, the, uh, I, don't, I, don't, don't, I don't want to shock you now, okay? Adam and Eve, it's myth, okay? You, okay. <laughs> myth does not mean not true. It just means they were trying to explain uh, how humans came into existence. There's two stories of creation. But the second story where this is from is trying to explain why we are, well, why we mess things up so much. Okay? Uh, and of all things, it had to do with craving hunger and knowledge. And of course, it was all a woman's fault, so we, you know. <laughs> Point being, though, that from the earliest time human beings have been yearning to be fed, not only through the gifts of God's earth, but yearning to be fed through Christ, through knowledge and love and hope. In just a moment, we're going to be baptized with a little noisy one over here. <laughs> You're going to be in a choir someday, mark my words. <laughs> and we're all going to be renewing our baptismal vows, our baptismal covenant. It's so interesting that, you know, we really put so much emphasis on the last three questions that you're going to be hearing. <laughs> And not too much emphasis on the first one. The first question will be, will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Notice how personal that is. Continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, which we hear through scriptures. Praying, which is taking time out alone with yourself and God, being fed with the body and blood of Christ through the Eucharist. Anybody who's a caregiver knows you have to do those, those things first. And then once that's done, then you can go and provide help and needs for other people. Then you can go and strive for justice and peace and respect the dignity of every human being. But if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not feeding yourself, or perhaps you're feeding yourself things that you shouldn't be feeding yourself, things that distract you from God, instead of bringing you closer to God, that's the time to stop and really think. Jesus and his disciples were so busy that they could not even eat. Are you too busy today in your lives to not, too busy to not stop and eat and feed on the one who gives us hope 
and peace and love? Are you too busy in your lives right now to go and take time and spend a few minutes in the morning or at night just thanking God for the blessings you have been given, even if it feels as if you don't have anything to be grateful for? Are you too busy in your lives to be able to go and help your neighbor when, they, when she or he are in need? Are you too busy to even take care of yourself? My sisters and my brothers, we saw firsthand today what happens when Jesus and his disciples couldn't even eat. He got a little snippy. <laughs> How much more would we be like if we don't take care of ourselves in body, mind, and spirit? It's an opportunity. It's a gift for all of us. Amen. Amen. <laughs>